All right, well, today we have a bit of an interesting episode because we have a man who donated $2,000 to do a coaching session uh, with me. So I'm going to be doing a coaching session for Adam Smith here. And uh, you were the second biggest donator for the 24 hour long uh, Rocket League game. Uh, for those who guys, of you guys who don't know what that was, basically Sunless Con hosted a large event where it was for Team C's. We ended up raising $40,000 total as a Rocket League community, and you were uh, a significant portion of that. Uh, you donated $2,000. The caveat was that I had to coach you if you were going to donate to the Team C's. Before we jump into today's games, I wanted to quickly talk to you guys about blue light. In today's world, we're basically bombarded by blue light all day. If you're like me, we're in front of screens non-stop, whether that's due to work, school, grinding Rocket League, and even TV and social media. Sounds like a lot, right? All of this blue light daily can seriously damage our eyes, mess with our sleep, cause headaches, and other issues as well. That's why I'm happy to be teaming up with GMG Performance once again, today's sponsor. I've worked with GMG in the past quite a few times, as you guys might know, because Danny and I have been wearing these glasses for over a year now, and we love them. The GMG Performance glasses act like a shield against the harmful blue light. For me personally, they help reduce the eye strain significantly because I work 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and I've definitely noticed an improvement in sleep quality. These glasses seriously help reduce the burden blue light puts on your eyes. Right now, I'm wearing the Optimizer model, and Danny is wearing the Uranos model. They're both really sleek and have a premium feel to them. This new generation of GMG Performance glasses is even more resistant to blue light, and the build quality is great. If you missed the Black Friday sale, I've worked with GMG to get you guys one last chance at a big discount just in time before Christmas. Just click the first link in the description for 40% off your order. This is your chance to get your own pair of GMG Performance glasses at nearly half the price, so be sure to check them out while the offer is still available. We're going to jump into a few casual games together first, and uh, just get a little warmed up and uh, hopefully discuss oh. like where your uh, weaknesses are and where you feel you're really strong in uh, in your rank. Oh, this guy stopped moving. I'm going to pass this middle. Oh, no, good try, no. good try. So you've been playing yeah, a lot during yeah. the pandemic? A little bit, yeah. Little bit. Like 800 hours or something like that. That's pretty good, actually. Diamond's a good amount for 800. Yeah, I think my shooting is probably one of my weak points. Okay. And do you find that uh, like your positioning is pretty good? Like you kind of have a good idea of where to be? Because it looks like so far you're in good spots. Yeah, I think so. And um, I mean, on a relative basis, that's probably one of my stronger points. Um, I also tend to play like third man a lot, like a little bit more okay. defensive. Do you play do you play 3v3 more than, than 2v2? Would you say that's like I, your go-to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because 2v2 is a little bit more, you know, crazy um, ball chasey. Like it would be... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. A little more generous. Right, exactly. That's looking pretty good. Good good clear, good pass. Alright. I mean so far it's looking good. Like I I'd say yeah, like I think that the biggest thing is so far that I've noticed is that when you have possession, uh you panic a little bit. Like meanwhile you have more room to play with than you think. Right, right. Because yeah. you have to remember how yeah, scary right. it is to have an opponent have the ball on you and then you just put yourself in their shoes how dangerous it is when they have the ball. Right, right. Like right here, you have lots of space. Nice. Oh, you got the alpha boost too, I just noticed. <laughs> Look at you, Mr. Moneybags. Yeah. Oh, close. This might help my game a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it definitely gives me yeah. a confidence boost, that's for sure. You said you've played for 800 hours, but when, when did you start? You said a couple years ago? Uh, maybe like 2019. Oh, wow. Okay, so you've, you've, been, you've been around for a while. I mean, you're a busy tech tech company guy, so... Oh, and my controller is heat again. Guy's probably going to clear it to me. Oh, that works. Oh, good try. That's tough. Yeah, shadow, shadow defense is really hard for me. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, the biggest thing uh, with shadow defense, like, that wasn't on target, which is actually good that you didn't go, I think, because it was just, like, rolling into right. the corner. But having a good idea of where the ball is over your net is definitely important. And, um... I found I saw that when you tried to go off for the takeoff, you kind of did a full stop before you took the takeoff. So it's really mm -hmm. important, like if you go into like some training packs and just set some balls over the backboard and try to like, it's really good to just spawn your car sort of like middle. And I would just do several shots like from different angles and just like practice that for a while, like doing a fast aerial under the ball. And we can we can we can um, even make a pack together later. As far as gameplay wise, we can probably just jump into some replays now and 
and uh, give it a look. Before we jump into the rest of this video, the coaching session ended up lasting a lot longer than I thought it would. So because of that, it had to be edited down for YouTube, but I'll be posting the unedited version of this video over on Facebook if you're interested. I'll have the training pack code in the description as well if you want to give it a try for yourself, but I'm saving the setup and explanation for the training pack in the unedited version as well. This session was jam-packed full of information for a player at this level, so I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. So these are all wins, you said? They're all wins, I think, yeah. Okay. But they're, uh, they're games where uh, both teams scored. Okay. What's your name in here? Is it, are you uh, Adam Smith? Uh, yeah, either Adam Smith or something. Like yeah, there that. Yeah. Okay, that's sweet. Yeah. Oh, I like the, uh, is that the SSG TKLOC? Yeah, I put that on after the fundraiser. Okay. So right now you're pr already pretty far out of the play. I would say like off the kickoff, you could have been a little bit more involved. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's a bit weird for me. I haven't, I haven't coached in a while, so let me... Uh, the biggest thing right now I noticed is that um, off the kickoff, you kind of like wait. You went back to net uh, instead of... Uh, there's two options you could take. Um, this guy's going for uh, a cheat uh, right here, right? This guy he's pushing up mm -hmm. and this guy's going for the kickoff. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with the kickoffs in, in Diamond too much, but uh, this guy's covering all the options in this cone right here, right? So your best option mm -hmm. is definitely to run back to the corner boost. Uh, it's less orthodox to go for the right one. Because usually what happens is that what's going to happen is Point is going to go for the kickoff, right? He's going to go for 50-50 on the ball. And then what's going to happen is he's going to end up probably falling on this side. So you have two players that are probably occupying more of this space on this side. So there's two boosts for them to fight for. You don't want to take right. one of those uh, when they go back in the rotation. So the safest bet is back here because the Point will either fight for the ball that leads out this way or go get the boost on this side if the ball feeds onto this side and then your teammate can also be the one that comes and grabs the ball or or takes the ball if it rolls up the wall like this he can go back corner so i know that's a lot but basically all, that basically just explains that you don't ever really want to take this side too much because you're gonna have more teammates probably fighting for boost in that corner and the biggest thing too here is um if you were moving a little bit more on this play when you're moving up like this is pretty tight angle yeah. i would almost have my car kind of facing this way a little bit just in case like you kind of want to create a triangle yeah. with your teammates uh yeah um so if you were over here a little more um yeah. just to cover those those wide angles because in in your case when you're sitting here and watching the play in the corner here like nothing it can all of a sudden just boom over your head like you saw so you've got to be a little right. bit more uh, defensively prepared for any of those situations uh, meanwhile, Takasi here can probably be the one that kind of fights right. for those, uh, you know, those spill out balls here. So if totally. you're a little bit more in a good position here, you can also then turn out really quickly and boost. Because you have 100 boost um, and you keep your speed, then it's not as hard to yeah. do that 180. Um, but you doing a standstill right. here, you're going to use like 30 to 40 right. just to turn around. All right, so good. You can push up a little further. I like this. So waiting for the backboard. Hey, nice finish. Good play. Yes, that was good of you. Nice. I still think that you are moving pretty slow. I mean, you did score, and if there were better defenders, they probably would have been there before you. I think, like, just keeping your pace yeah, and going. Um, yeah. All right. And then off this kickoff, this is the first time I've seen you kick off, so I'm just going to... So right here, I usually try to flip right when my wheels touch that, that boost mark. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to flip forward, and then while I'm, while I'm flipping, I mean, you can work on uh, doing the flipping for a bit, and then later on, people do the, the corner flip, so that way they can boost forward while they're right. going for the ball. But I try yeah. when I'm going for the ball and hitting the contact, which I, this guy goes as well, but I'm not going to comment on that one. Um, try to hold at least a little bit of boost. Like, I usually try to hold 18 to 20 if I can. So you start mm -hmm. off with uh, 33, I believe. So you're going to get a total of 45 boost to work with uh, when you pick up this 12. So trying to think of how much to use i boost a little bit to it and then the second i land on it i try to stop and then you can boost forward that's a, that's like a, a classic front flip kickoff you can try and you'll get a better contact on the ball when you reach there so right here you should be looping out wide really really fast like right now you should be flipping flipping uh your teammate could have been the one to go for this challenge um mm -hmm. but just committing really low boost here is going to put yourself right. like constantly stuck on uh trying to run back and, and recover Meanwhile, you could yeah. just, uh, you know, fully rotate and finish. That's a tough read. And see, so your teammate did try to go for that one because he was next in rotation. Right. This is good. Your teammate should be moving up. Once again, like, I would be probably just moving, you know, you can do a lot of S's, like a little bit mm -hmm. of winding. And that and that way, when you're, you're sort of posturing towards their side, there's always a right. chance, like, right here, you could loop out. Right here, you could loop right. outwards if you ever need to turn. So it's always good to just, you know, keep the pressure going. 
you do see a booming clear here, but once again, you're facing straight. So the entire, the only way you could get a ball is either to jump up immediately, or you have to do a mm -hmm. 180 and then follow the ball behind, which are both very difficult. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. if you're facing sort of this way, then at any point it's a 90 degree turn either way to do whatever you need to do. I know there's a lot of information. If you never need, need to stop or anything, like let me know, I'll just... Uh... <laughs> No, yeah, it, it is a lot, but it's awesome. I mean, there's so much opportunity for improvement. Sure, yeah. It's like, game is incredible. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, it's all literally in your hands. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's so much detail, and, uh, gosh, it's, it's really cool. All right, so you got the boost. That's good. I like that, that you rotate out here and not chase the ball down. I like that you let your teammate go. Um, this is a good position to be in, too, for the pass. All right, so I, I don't mind this waiting here because there's it's right here now. Once you see this, uh, the ball come over your head, this is when you're you're gonna want to come out because reaching this ball before he pops it over your head is gonna be probably uh, very unlikely. So if he yeah. flips over you, you can get out of here, and then your your new third can come in, and uh, right. and you can be a second man for him. Because uh, right now Takasi yeah. committed into the corner, he's probably gonna have very little boost, and he wasn't able yeah. to uh, get the ball, so he just got mid, mid actually. Wait, what happened? What happened? Oh no. Did we lose someone? <laughs> we lost a lot. Isn't this 3v3? <laughs> this is 3v3. Okay. <laughs> this is not a good replay. All so right. So, no, it's okay. It's just funny that everyone's gone. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I was like, okay, so your third man should be here. Oh wait, there's actually only three people three people in the entire lobby. So let's <laughs> let's change the uh the replay here. What happened there? That's I don't know. Funny. Okay. Right, let's find you here. Okay, so you go for the back corner. Once again, um, the ball's rolling into the corner. You have a teammate pushing in here. You could probably be a little wider here. Um, don't want to end up being in a line behind your teammates. I see you're flipping here. I would have probably flipped this way towards midfield. Because um, once mm -hmm. again, if you're over here, then you can do a turn backwards. So that's kind of interesting, right? Because I think of it as, okay, so rotation, we're sort of forming a line or like almost like a queue to hit the ball yeah you know, but you're saying actually it's like it's still like it's still like a rotation with like a cue but you're it, not yeah like you are still you other. still are technically third man over here like if you want to think of right. a one two three sort of vibe but um yeah being in a line means that like all of you oh that's a bad line let me draw that again if you go over there like all of this is their ter territory because right. once again we have a player on their side over here so they're covering way more ground than you are you got to like think about you know, where can you cover the most for wherever the ball spills out? I mean, this is interesting what ended up, ended up happening here. So you end up being in the right position, but you could have been there by also moving fast and then, you know, coming back to yeah. that because the play was really slow. Uh, but yeah. just, yeah, just moving around. You're going to get beat here. Um, yeah. The second you get this clear, um, this is what I was talking about, like having way more space than you think. This guy's not in the play anymore. You know he's over your head, so I would ignore him at this point. Right. Yeah. You're looking at this player and this player. I kind of keep an eye. Like I know what I know what the ball's doing. We know how ball physics works. It's gonna arc towards you, right? So when mm -hmm. when you know where the ball is free and no one's near you, you need to quickly snap towards this guy, snap towards this guy, and gauge the space. Um, the hardest thing for players at a lower level to gauge is this space because of the perspective, um, the space right in front of them. Because yeah. when you go into an uh, a a top view, it's insane how much space there is in between. Uh, like when you actually see it, like it's like, okay, wow, there's actually like an entire quarter field um, of space between you and Spectre. And this guy's once again not involved at all. So uh, yeah. when you go, go back to your point of view, though, he looks like two inches from you, <laughs> right? Like uh, on screen space, he looks very close yeah. to you. But it's knowing yeah. that there is actually so much time and considering that the ball is also spilling towards you that. He has to break. He has to make up the distance. The ball is also running away from him while the ball is coming to you. Right. So exactly. So yeah, knowing that the totally. ball is arcing towards you, what I would do is while the ball is falling, try to get in here to like catch it in front of your spoiler or not the spoiler, mm -hmm. like your engine here. Uh, I would try to catch mm -hmm. it in front so it spills in front of you or stays close. And then what you can Ooh. do is either uh, flick it behind him, or uh, another option is to wait for the bounce. The bounce here, and you half volley it off the wall. Um, mm -hmm to pass back to yourself so uh, totally. we'll go back to the play here and see what happens you hit it so you hit it and then because you didn't pass it to because, yourself or it, uh, yeah he goes for it first so at that point once i see this kind of thing happening i say okay i've given up possession i need to give up right um right. you can still push here but you got to remember that there's many options that you could do differently you can come up to this point to uh you know force him into a catch out the wall and then loop out 
um, to let your teammates uh, cover the next ball. But mm -hmm. the one thing you don't want to do is commit when the ball's so far away. Because once again, this is another thing where like yeah. this is the spacing yeah. of two players, right? It looks the yeah. same to you uh, because of the distance, but uh, in front of the screen, but it's way closer for him. So you're just gonna outplay yourself. Is there is there value in that position to like applying pressure to him? Definitely, even if I definitely. Know he's gonna beat me uh, it? Yeah, it definitely is. It's it's all about uh, it's po it's called posturing, right? Um, you're kind of signaling to the opponents that you're committing, but you're not really right. committing because you're 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 making right. them panic by being close. Because like like I said, when you have to envision how it looks for them, they see a player rushing yep. in, and then all of a sudden they're not there. They're gonna flip at it, like how you've been doing when you think they're there. Right. Yeah. Totally. This is this is why I noticed when we were playing together too. I didn't want to mention yeah. it while we were playing, but um, you are last man, so you kind of panic when you see the ball going going to you. But we know where all the players are. There's one here. There was one back here. I mean, you might not know where that guy is, but um, it's not the scariest thing for this ball to go over you right now. If it was towards net, I would understand cutting it off while it's like going over your head. Mm -hmm. But because it's gonna mm -hmm. just like bounce in the corner and then loop around, like you got so much time to just turn out and let the ball pass you. I see that even in the highest level of Rocket League, people tend to not leave the the ball for a better position uh, to just, you know, it. there's a lot of stalling time that you can use in the corner bounces. Um, right. So if we look at what would have happened, like there is a player here, but he's facing the wrong way, but it doesn't even matter if he was there because, uh, so you're here, the ball's uh, at a trajectory like this, we see it. It's gonna go over here and like sort of roll and bounce like this. At this point, you could have been way over here, rotating behind and like caught the ball in the corner and waited for your team to then be here. Um, he would have probably been like right here uh, and you would have been in the corner playing the ball here and he would have been ready to get behind you and be in a new position. Right. Meanwhile, when you're touching the ball right here, it's gonna go off the wall and then spill out for one of these guys. Yeah, totally, totally. So it's like he, the ball ends up more on your side of the court, but like your team is in a better position. Exactly, yeah. You can't and that's a, like that's the thing I see. The... I see a lot of people doing that, is that they, they, they think that being on this side of their field is a bad thing. And it's right. not always a bad thing. So this might be a goal here, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. It should, it should I mean, it should have been, should have been, definitely should have been. And like that would have been on you because of the way that that bounced. Yeah, totally. totally. So right here uh, is another situation where you have a player who's in net ready for this. And it is a pretty awkward ball, but um, cutting back the way you did, um, you're going to put yourself in front of your teammate and then both of you might end up committing. So instead you could have rotated behind him. Uh, this yeah, is where this is where post. people say, yeah, far post. Far post is sort of overrated in some situations. Um, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't rotate far post. Uh, I think at this level, you, far post is probably your best bet because of the way that people rotate. Right. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, in SSL, like there are times where you just need to cut fast. And you're going to find that as you level, uh, rank up and level up uh, your abilities, that far post will become less and less prevalent because of the fact that everyone's moving faster at the highest level. Yeah, totally. All right, good, like the rotation back. So I find that you are more, you are way faster on your way back than you are forward. And I think that's sort of some hesitancy about being forward and over committing. All right, so right there, you could probably go for this. This is like one of those things where if you're confident in your aerials, you could maybe keep your momentum going. You, I like this loop, that loop wide, but if you just kept going, this ball is your first ball. I understand that you are last. You're a little bit scared, scared to go. Yeah, I also wanted to give my teammates time to like rotate. Back. Right, exactly. I, okay. I definitely tell people who are at lower ranks to like not be so afraid to lose. Um, right. Just be, you know, be ready to learn from what you do wrong. All right, good free ball. Good chip. Oh, good try. That was a bit of... <laughs> that was actually a decent try. I think that the, the pop was a good idea because the player in nets can be really confused. And you did have the free yeah. shot. The second I do that right. pop, the second the second you pop off the backboard, I'm kind of already realizing where this is going to go. It's going to hit here and then bounce out like on the trajectory on the floor. It's going to go out over here. So what I'm going to try and do is make this easier for myself as much as possible and loop to get on that angle as fast as possible. Um, and, once, and once again, this is the thing where like in SSL, like you'd already be jumping and adjusting yeah. to get the shot because this player is going to be doing that as well. Just keep that in mind as you level up. I don't want to have to like, you know, uh, just think about diamond. You want to think about further down the road, right? At this level, I would say, yeah, you could probably loop around and, and make the shot because it's really awkward for him. But just like keep in mind that at a certain level, 
of what the player's right. abilities are, this is going to change. This situation is going to change dramatically. That's a decent rotation. I don't mind this one. Like, it's pretty good. You can push up here, force him. Once again, um, driving up is okay, but the, it's the committing that's going to slow you down and your team down. Right. So right here, like, driving up, yeah. forcing him to clear it high is good, but I would not jump. I would immediately turn like this, grab a few boost pads. You don't even need to go all the way back because right. you have 40 boosts. You're pretty good here, so... What other than shooting, like, what do you feel like? Do you ever feel lost on the field, for example, or you're not sure where to go? Like, you're stuck between decisions and stuff. I mean, I think it's like all the stuff that you've been pointing out, right? Like, you pointed out probably like six or seven different situations, um, and it's just like highly situational. Right. Exactly. And that's what that's what I need to develop. You know, I have like maybe two different heuristics in my head that I'm using, but yeah. like I need need more, like. Um, more specific heuristics. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right, so good. Good tactical fake for the for the teammate there. I like that. <laughs> right, good move off the backboard. Could be a shot opportunity. Oh! Oh my goodness. Oh, back back in. This is high octane action. Here we go. <laughs> good positioning. I like this cutoff. So the opponent's gonna go. I would take their boost maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that works too. Close. Hey, nice finish. I mean, that was good pressure. Yeah, um, yeah it's hard to hard to say exactly like where things could have been better. Obviously, it was a goal, so it worked out. But there's a few things you could have done where you grab the corner boost instead, or wait for the the shot mid and pass it. It's hard at this rank to know where your teammates are going to be though. They can push in for this. That's all good so far. I like that. So you're in a good position. You're waiting for it. Get backboard. Once again, that's the situation. These are the situations where like you're on the side of that ball. And, uh, you know, things didn't happen out the exact way you thought. But right now you see right. two people in the air, one there, one there, one on the, the field, or one on the floor. Um, this ball's going to bounce back out mid. So there is a direct line of sight shot here. Um, who's right. there to take it? You're third. So right. you're there just in case anything spills here, anything goes over here, you can go run and take the corner. Um, yep. But you just need to know that you need to trust, hopefully, that your teammate can t at least take some sort of shot. Good clear. Should be signals here. All right, good read. That's going to be in too, isn't it? Oh my. A good dunk. Boom. Look at that. And one second left too. All right. Oh, and they forfeit. They forfeit. They didn't even try for the one second. Okay. All right. I think there was a lot of points where, that, you know, where that hesitation really threw you out of the game. And, uh, you know, you're positioning on that, that second man. Second man, I, yeah. I've said this before. I've tweeted it out. Second man is the hardest position in the game to play perfectly. I think that people don't really know how to play the, the position uh, like versus the first and third man. I think that's their weakest in general on uh, like generally that's the, the weakest in the, any rank. Uh, second man is the hardest position to know when to be the new first man, the new third man or when to play second man to stall. There's so many options. Mm -hmm. Second man is the hardest. And that's why I think that people always, you know, rat on the third man and say, oh, they missed the, the save or something. But second right. man is a huge integral part of how good a team is. So playing that second man role when you are in that position just know uh where you're covering are you are you in that oh you're in a dingo okay all right <laughs> i see it I like the design all right good should be yours here it's a decent pass but it oh my gosh it actually works okay that's really scary that that like that that, that play right. worked because i centering Centering as second man, I always try to like tell people who are at a low, lower level that uh, first and second man should be the passing, and third man should be like the filler. Um, whereas like when you did this and there's two people facing mid right here, like they're both not in a great position for a direct shot. So I don't know if you were trying to shoot there or if like you were actually going for a pass. It ended it, it ended up working, but I think that it's 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 dangerous to be re reassured that that position worked well for you because fat pig right. really should have been facing this way instead of diving this way yeah like i think that yeah, he was totally. scared of the shot but see if he turns here good boom middle so it's gonna be um one of the opponents they do clear to cross that's a really good read i like that that position you could be pushing in here a lot faster um and even if josh is gonna beat i'm pointing at the screen what am i doing uh, even if the if even if he's gonna beat you, being here is at least gonna force a 50-50 or something, or at least make him yeah. panic. Uh, because the ball is rolling this way, so there's a good chance that he'll probably beat you. Um, but you do clear it in a good spot, and if you boost it right away to follow that ball, you probably would be first there. 
But then you so go. The play there is, sorry, the play there is to force a 50 50 for your teammate so that like your teammate can score it. Well, that, yeah, whatever like, whatever uh, happens. I mean, you can never really guarantee where a 50 50 is going to go. I mean, uh, right. in the nature of itself, the it, it's it's kind of random where it's going to go. You can kind of force it a certain way to make it more of a 60 40 or something, but. Um, yeah. You see that once you make this clear, I do like the touch, and you actually grab the boost on doing so. Right here, you could boost right away. Boost, 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 boost. Mm -hmm. You'll mm -hmm. be there right on the ball. It's yeah. hard to know like how much space you can cover quickly if you if you uh, aren't used to it, but that you could be on that ball right away. Yeah, totally, totally. I see. I see you want wanting to do it. It's like I. It's the curse of like. <laughs> Knowing the ball is free, but your car isn't in the right position. So right here, it's yeah. just like, you just can't, you just can't turn. Especially when your car is like all the way backwards. You just need to leave this position. Uh, yeah. There's no way that your car is going to be able to physically do what you want to do in your head. And I, it, it yeah. happens all the time. You're like, ah, oh, I wish I was facing forward right now for the ball. But it's just right. a reality yeah. of a physics based game that if your car isn't the fa the right facing the right way, you're going to have to just move out of the way. I always think to myself of just resetting a lot of the times. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do, right? Even if you position optimal, you just don't know how the ball is going to Yeah, sometimes where it's, it's going to go. I mean, if so it's like if that was the case, like pro play would be pretty boring because everyone would just be like right. saving everything. It's just yeah. it's just a case of like yeah. right right time, yeah. wrong time, wrong position. Right. Yeah, totally. Totally. And there's obviously a certain level of control of that, but sometimes it's just hard to know exactly what's going to happen. There's there's a lot of right. things that a lot of variables in this game. Yeah. This game's been, been pretty good though, like really good. You know, maybe it's the dingo, who knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's like, you. I think the biggest thing is just getting the read of the bounces early. I, I kind of already see where this is going. Like I kind of draw this line in my head um, mm -hmm. of the bounces. So knowing that bounce trajectory, like I can already see that from this just before the ball's mm -hmm. even doing it. I want to know where I can beat it. And that just takes time. Like you have 800 hours in the game, and this is what I'm telling a lot of people is that like it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours to get good at this game. Knowing in your head if you can reach one, uh, two on the wall, or the the reverse bounce here, three. Knowing in your head from this position with this much boost, which one you can meet and which one is the most optimal position, right? You have Josh falling with it, so you know that he's probably gonna be the one to pressure it, and it ends up being that way. Um, in this mm -hmm. position, he's gonna fall. So it's like, which one do I want to do? I have a teammate in the air. I have one one behind me somewhere. Can't really see him right now. That's okay. Um, your best bet is probably to position wide here to get your car facing forward when the ball bounces off the wall. Um, so I would probably immediately turn out like this, wait for the bounce, and then uh, try to get the catch on the ball. Let's go back to this position. You're in, you're backing up right now. You can boost right away. Boost forward. Mm -hmm. Use some of that boost mm -hmm. to cover the ground. Um, you don't want to use mm -hmm. all your boosts only when you're going for the ball, because number one, mm -hmm. you're giving your your the opponents a very good tell that you're going for the ball. If only uh, if you're boosting towards it, boosting can tend to scare an opponent. So even doing right. so, boosting here can scare him to going for an early touch. And if he runs at this early and he is going to beat you, the, the worst he's going to do is roll up the wall and then you'll just go here. Help right. Right. Uh, I'm getting comfort and getting comfort comfortable with the wall is important too. I noticed that you there's a few moments where yeah. you did try to get that read and you kind of got uncomfortable. Um, yeah. so that's another thing where we can go. I can probably make a training pack for you really quickly where there's a ball rolling like this and you're positioned here and you just get get used to reading the ball and keeping it close to the corner. Right, nice. So you could go up for this a little bit earlier. It's dangerous that you waited so long. Well, it's, it's that thing that I talked about before where they're chasing a ball rolling towards you. So as you go forwards, like if I draw, I can do a black screen here. I haven't done that yet. Uh, let's do a blackboard here. Um, they throw the ball um, this way and the ball's right here um, coming towards you. As they yeah. go this way, um, the ball yeah. is also has also traveled an extra distance. Whereas when you're right. going towards it, you're covering that additional distance on top of what you've done. So yeah, the gap totally. is like the gap of where the ball is moving. I mean, you you understand it. It's just like also seeing yeah. it is is nice to. Um, how do I? Yeah, I, I guess I just think that like my um, my like aerial probability goes up as the ball is closer to the ground. That totally makes sense, and that just comes with like comfort of going for aerials. So, like I said, right. I yeah. think that training packs are your number one go-to right now. Is just like getting used to being comfortable jumping in the air. 
Because I, I can definitely tell your, your playstyle is pretty grounded and that is probably, like you said, a confidence thing on your aerials. But you can't learn yeah. to aerial better unless you aerial, if that makes sense. Right. <laughs> like you just, you right. just have to do it. Um, <laughs> so, looks like a good chance here. Right. And it worked! Alright, nice. nice. Um, I worked at this level, it would probably not work at a future level if there's someone in the net like that. Um, unless you shot uh, far right or far left. Right. I think this is the final score, from what I remember. So, we'll see how you guys hold this. I love the extra spinneroonies in the air. Those uh, <laughs> little freezes. You did oh, land so nicely, though. That's another thing, too, is just making sure whenever you land off an aerial, like, the more you aerial, you need to get used to recovering nicely and stuff, so. We're coming up the last 10 seconds here. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh they forfeit. All right, never mind. I lied. That was the last three seconds. <laughs> well, that was good. I, I think that, I think that we, we learned a lot in those, like, two and a half games. Uh, so much stuff, man. Even though you paid for just the coaching, I don't mind you giving me updates on how you're doing. Like, I, I don't think you need to go as far as like you know making a chart of your shots in in a day and how how much. You just kind of feel the gradual improvement. I feel like. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. That was great. That was a good like hour long little session there. Totally. That was solid. Thank you so much, Les. Yeah, it's man. Tough. And like I said, if you ever need like any more, if you feel like you're getting confused with what I told you or whatever, and you want some clarity or like. You know, clarification on like your shots and stuff. Just let me know, and I'll I'll hit you up and uh, you know awesome. sort of reiterate and stuff. Yeah, but that was great. Hope you guys enjoyed on the cool. the stream side. Uh, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun to coach again. I haven't done that in a long time, over a year, like I said. So hope I didn't do too bad. I hope you enjoyed it. Seems like you got a lot out of it. So happy about that. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Thank awesome. you so much, Vlad. Hey, no thanks problem. For thanks for thanks for joining. It was great. Uh, catch you later. Peace.